Hey, Peru string players. I'm here with a virtual lesson for you because, as you know, you guys are at home doing your week of remote learning. And uh, I'm sure many of you were disappointed that the first day of remote learning was also the first day of string lessons. And uh, I was disappointed about that, too. But we are going to make the best of it and still work hard this week to learn something. And then hopefully next week we'll be back in person for uh, an in-person lesson. And so today and this week, we're going to be practicing note reading. And note reading is very important as a string player or as a musician, really, uh, learning any instrument. Because when you come to class, uh, you're going to have a music stand in front of you with a lesson book or some piece of sheet music that I've given you. And you want to be able to look at that music and tell what it says, be able to read what it's telling you to do so that you can stick with the rest of the class. If uh, after, And I will say, note reading is something that takes time to get like you didn't just start reading chapter books in kindergarten you started um, gradually working your way into reading easier books and then things with bigger words and uh, eventually after a lot of practice you became a good reader well it's the same thing with reading music it might be hard at first and that's okay but if after three or four months you look at your paper and you just have a big question mark um, in your head when you look at it that means that maybe you haven't spent quite enough time practicing your note reading. And so we're going to not only work on that today, but that's something that we work on in lessons um, when we have them in person too. So there's a few things that I'd like to show you about note reading. And then uh, I actually have a really cool activity for you guys to work on this week. So uh, the first thing is the musical alphabet. And I have a feeling that this might be um, a review for many of you. And that's awesome if this is a review. If not, that's okay. I'm going to go through it uh, as if you had never seen this before. So the musical alphabet is kind of exactly the same as our alphabet actually because it starts on a and then goes to b c d e f g where the musical alphabet is different is it stops at g it does not move on to h instead it goes back to a so you play all the way from a to g afterwards after you play g you just go back to a and so one of the things that will happen and that you'll notice as a musician is that you'll start learning more than one note with the same name. And actually, after about two or three months of learning your instrument, you are going to learn two different notes called D. We're going to call one low D and one high D. And uh, it's just important to know that, that um, you might know more than one D or more than one B or A. And that's just how the musical alphabet works. I have a picture of a keyboard here to kind of demonstrate that for you. So this is only part of a keyboard. If you looked at a full keyboard, it would be even more uh, pronounced about how this works. But we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And after we go to G, there's another A. And if you were to look at a full keyboard, you'd see probably seven or eight different notes called A. The next important thing about uh, reading music is understanding how the staff works. Again, I have a feeling you've talked about this in music class before. Staff is made up of li five lines, which then once you have lines, you also have spaces. Um, and one thing that you probably have practiced in class before is identifying line notes and space notes. I think I saw that I can add a little emoji here so I can use this to do my demonstration. So if I were to put the emoji right here on this line, we would call that a line note because the line is going right through the emoji and we could take it even a step further and call it a line note on the first line it's on the bottom line okay if i were to put him uh here we would call that a space note and that's because not only is there not well because there's not a line going through it it's in a space but then we again can take it a step further and say it's in the one to the second space okay a lot of times students will get confused they'll say that let me do it over here that this note and this note look very similar and they're right that you're they're absolutely right when they say that they do look similar the difference and the way that you can tell the difference between them is that one of them is on the second line and the other is on the second space so let me clear that um the staff does not tell you what note you're playing it will eventually, but you have to add something. But right now, as it is, if I put a note here, I have no clue what note that is until I add the next thing. And that next thing is something called a clef. The clef is what indicates the note names on the staff. 
And as string players, there are three different clefs that our string instruments learn, but you will only have to learn one, which should be a relief that you only have to know how to read one clef. Here's our three clefs. Treble clef over here is what our violin students will read. Bass, you can probably guess, is for the bass, but also it's for the cello. And then alto clef is for our viola friends. And so if you play, for example, the cello, and you go and look at violin music, it's not going to be read the same way. And I'm going to give you an example in a minute. But again, it's important that you know this because sometimes I've had kids who maybe they forget their lesson book. And so they borrow one from a classmate and their classmate plays a different instrument and they think they could read the music, but they can't. And it actually makes things even more confusing when you look at a different clef than your own. OK, so um, just keep that in mind. And let me show you the difference. And these are the notes that you're going to be working on reading this week. It's kind of hard to see. I'll have to move myself out of the way so that you can get a screenshot of this. There, that's perfect. Um, and I don't know if I can move this. Um, there, that's better. Okay. Um, so here I have the three clefs. So up here is for our violin students, our treble clef viola, alto clef, and cello bass, um, uh, the bass clef. You can see that these are all the same six notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, for all of them, but they are written differently. And so when you do your assignment, you're going to have your own worksheet depending on your instrument, and you're going to come back to this page. I want you to come back to this page and freeze it or take a screenshot and use it as a reference to help you. OK, so if uh, you're identifying a note on the worksheet and it's on the second, uh, well, let me say it's on the third line, the third line. There's a third line note right here, but this is for our cello and bass players. So if you're a violinist, you're going to want to look for this one up here. This is a third line note for violin. So it's important that you know which of these you're looking at. So these are the six notes that this week you're going to practice reading. I'm going to show you exactly what your assignment is, and then I will set you free to start working on that this week. So, um, oh, I don't know how to get rid of that. Hmm. There. That's good to know. Okay, and let me get myself back here. There we go. Okay, so this week you're going to be doing a color by note activity. Um, this, I don't know that it really exists, so I made one for you, and hopefully you'll find this fun. Um, you're each going to have a worksheet depending on your instrument. So if you're a violin, um, you can see I, it's in the title of the document. So you can pick the one with your instrument in it. And you're going to go through each of these um, exercises and figure out what note is written on the staff. So I'm going to tell you, I'll just give everyone the first answer. The first note is D for everybody. OK, so number one, the first note is D. So you'll go over here to the answer choices and you'll see that D means you're going to color space one red. And I'll show you what what I mean by color in a minute. But if you go through all of these exam, uh, all of these exercises and identify the notes, it's going to tell you the color for each number. OK, and you can see 23 is a free space. You can choose any color you'd like. I have this worksheet for violins. I have it for violas and I have it for cello bass. Those will all be linked in Parent Square. Once you find all the colors for each number, then you're going to go to this really cool picture of a pumpkin. And you can see that each of the segments is labeled with a number. So I already told you that segment one, which belongs to question number one, that the answer is D. So what you would do is you would then color in segment one red and by the time you're done you'll have a really cool looking pumpkin like this okay so what i'd like you to do is this week practice that note reading fill out the worksheet color in the pumpkin and then if you bring your pumpkin back next week um i'll hang it up on the on the wall and we'll get to show everyone your note reading skills the cool thing is everyone's pumpkin will be a little bit unique because the 23 spot will be different for everybody. I colored mine purple. You can pick a different color. So there will be a something unique on everyone's pumpkin, which I think is cool. So if you have any questions while you're doing this, you can send me an email or you can have mom and dad send me an email. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys do with note reading and checking out your pumpkins when you come to your lesson next week. So have a great week, everyone. And uh, good luck with that note reading.